everyone, I'm Tabitha and I've read five more books. Regular watchers of this channel will already know this, but I do book reviews every time I've read five books. You should know that I don't read just one specific age category or genre. I'm actually a reader of pretty much anything. So I will make sure to tell you what age category, what genre it is, and more importantly, what kind of readers I think will love the book that I'm reviewing. I do use a five star rating system to review all my books. So I'd like to take a quick second to tell you about that system. Five star ratings are reserved for books that I absolutely love that I think transcend genre. In other words, you might love this one even if you don't normally read the genre it's written in. Four star books, on the other hand, are books that I absolutely love and think are great books, but they're more specific to the genre they are written for. Three star ratings are for books that I think are good books, but they have a really niche audience. You might not love this one, even if you normally read this genre. Two star ratings are the ratings I reserve for books that I think are problematic. I do try to explain some of the problems in the what I didn't love section so that you know if it's the kind of thing that would really bother you or not. One star rating on the other hand are reserved for books that I honestly didn't enjoy and can't recommend. They're just not for me. All right, with that out of the way, let's get to the reviews. The next book I read for the month of February is Falling for Wolf by Dawn Marie Clifton. This is an adult age category romance book. It is independently published in 2019, and this one is 326 pages. Your synopsis. The year is 1865, and Julia Westcott is a healer with a life completely under control. That is until she meets Edwin Wolf and finds herself fascinated by this stranger. Will Julia choose to solve the mystery that is Mr. Wolf? And I was sent an ebook copy in exchange for an honest review from the author. So what didn't I like about this one? Well, the first thing I should tell you is that these are going to be very small nitpicky things because this book was very well done. For example, some of the dialogue in this book felt a little modern for the story we were telling. This book takes place in 1865, but yet some of the dialogue had a modern almost feel to it. But I think that was done on purpose to kind of pull in some modern to this old fashioned tale. The only other thing I can say about this one is I did catch a few, and when I say a few, I'm talking one, maybe two grammatical errors. And the only reason I mention those is because I'm being nitpicky. So what did I like about this story? Well, the first thing, and this is a big one, is that this story went in a direction I wasn't expecting. And if you're a watcher of this channel, you know I love that. This is a romance book that takes place in 1865, but about halfway through this book, I found myself thinking, how is there still half a book left? We got our happily ever after, move on with the story. And then it took a twist and I realized this book went so much deeper than I thought. The second thing I liked about this book is Julia as a character. She is wonderful and wonderfully well-written. I enjoyed the way this character turned her nose up at 1865 societal expectations. And I thought she was believable, but important. She's exactly the kind of woman I imagine I would have been in the 1800s, and so for that, I truly, truly loved her. The third thing I liked about this book is that it introduced a villain, which I wasn't expecting, and the villain is very well written. I'm a sucker for a well written villain. I like them to be sneaky, thoroughly bad, and shocking, and this was exactly my kind of villain. So, who do I think should read this one? This is going to appeal to a lot of readers. The historical setting appears to be really well researched. It has a romance storyline that's going to please your romance readers. It's a little bit of shock and thrills thrown in to surprise you, and it has a great ending. So readers who like strong females in their historical fiction specifically are going to enjoy this one. My rating? Overall, I went five stars for this one. I was pleasantly surprised to find this one crossing so many genres and ticking so many boxes for me. It's a well-written romance that will appeal to historical fiction fans and even has something for the people who like mystery thrillers. This one is very well written and you should probably go add this one to your TBR. Five stars for Falling for Wolf by Dawn Marie Clifton. All right, watchers, you just heard me give this book five stars. That means if you have a book that you think is similar to this book, please make sure you drop the name of the book and the author down below in the comments because I'll be choosing books based on this one for next month's TBR. 
The next book I read for the month of February is Like Nothing Amazing Ever Happened by Emily Blaywatt. And I'm sorry if I got that name wrong. This is a middle grade contemporary story. It's coming in April of 2020 from Delacorte Press, and this one is 224 pages. And I did receive an e-arc of this book from NetGalley and Delacorte Press in exchange for an honest review. Your synopsis. Justin is trying to survive some major life changes. His father has died and his mother and brother are trying to keep the household afloat financially. A coming of age story of a boy dealing with grief. So what didn't I like about this one? The first thing I can say I didn't like is that Justin's voice is a little hard to drop into at first. It took me maybe two or three chapters before I was completely comfortable with Justin's voice and personality. The second thing I didn't like about this one is it does make some time jumps. There's a few points where the story jumps over some events in the story that you almost feel like you wish you had taken time for. It took me a little off balance trying to figure out what we had jumped over or how that was important. The last thing I can say I didn't like about this one, and this is more of a content warning for other people, this one deals with PTSD, the Vietnam War, possible suicide, bullying, and death all wrapped into one story. So if any of that bothers you or you don't enjoy stories about those, you may want to skip this one. So what did I like about this story? The first one, and this is a big one, is that this story takes a realistic look at grief. And in a middle grade character and in a middle grade audience, that is wonderful to see so well done. Justin's situation involves death and the questions that surround that grief and the period that he's going through in really realistic and incredibly well done ways. The best part about this book is that it's written for a middle grade audience and yet exploring grief means that it's something kids may have to relate to and deal with and it's very well done. The second thing I like this one about this one is that it deals with friendship and loyalty. This book explores a lot with those two big concepts. One of those is friendship not only explored just through Justin, but also through Justin and his brother. The way that they relate to each other and react to each other is just wonderfully well written and it definitely causes some emotional moments for readers. The third thing I can say I liked about this book is the characters in general. The main characters of this story obviously especially Justin but some of the other characters as well they just give you a very strong sense of their personality and you absolutely root for them to succeed through the entire book. Who do I think should read this one? If you're a reader who's looking for a contemporary story that realistically looks at grief you're absolutely going to love this one. This would be a great one to read with or simultaneously as your middle grades child especially if you've experienced a loss or you have grief you're dealing with in your family. My overall reading for this one, I said four stars. I enjoyed the emotional contemporary story, and if you're looking for an emotional middle grade contemporary story, it will be exactly what you're looking for. So four stars for Like Nothing Amazing Ever Happened by Emily Blaywalk. The next book I read for the month of February is The Best Kind of People by Zoe Whittle. This is an adult age category contemporary story. It came out in 2016 by House of Anansi Press, and it is 404 pages. Your synopsis. George Woodbury, a beloved husband and father, is arrested for allegations of impropriety. His family must cope with the community that turns on them and the changes in their lives. How do they defend someone they love, even as they wonder if he could be guilty? So what didn't I like about this one? Well, the first thing I can say is that the entire premise that begins this book, setting the stage for George being a good person, irked me. It felt like we didn't have the entire story. It wasn't explored well. And I think I've read too many books that explored a similar concept in a better way. So if it's put me on the wrong foot for this story right from the beginning. The second thing I could say I didn't like about this one is that there's a side story arc with a character named Kevin and that entire story arc just didn't work for me. The second thing I didn't like about this one is that there's a side arc for a character named Kevin and I didn't like that entire side arc. It just didn't work for me. The entire thing felt like it was trying too hard to be a mirrored story arc to what was happening with George and that just, it didn't work. I hate when a storyline doesn't feel natural for a character and feels forced. The third thing I didn't like about this one was the ending. You already know I don't mind stories with no resolution. I don't expect to know exactly how this one ended up. I knew we weren't gonna get all the answers, but I still didn't like the ending. It felt anticlimactic and it didn't fit with what I had learned about the characters up to that point, which was really frustrating. 
So what did I like about this story? Well, the main premise of the story, the idea of focusing on the family of someone who's accused of a crime instead of the accused person or the accusers is really kind of smart. I liked the focus being on Joan, the wife, and then Sadie and Andrew, the kids. I also liked Andrew as a character, one of the children. He's actually a very well-written character. I liked that he almost seemed to be the emotional center and rock of this family, despite the fact that he had a childhood lived in secret. I would read another book by this author if Andrew was the central character. The third thing I liked about this one is Sadie and Jimmy as a couple. I have to admit, I didn't particularly like Sadie individually, but I did like Sadie and Jimmy as a couple. I felt like they're not perfect, but they are a pretty good description of like a childhood, like teenage first romance kind of thing, where it's not perfect and they're not gonna end up happily ever after necessarily together and they have some rocky moments. I felt like that would have been a good, almost YA romance in and of itself, even if it was a little lacking in execution. So who do I think should read this one? If the idea of exploring how a family is affected by accusations appeals to you, you might like this one even more than I did. If you're a reader who enjoys emotional, raw stories that aren't necessarily wrapped up at the end, you may enjoy this one more than I did. My overall rating, I did give this one two stars. This one had a lot of problems for me that were hard for me to ignore, and I give problematic books two stars. So overall, two stars for The Best Kind of People by Zoe Whittle. The next book I read in the month of February is The Revenge of Seven by Pitticus Lore. This is book five in the Lorian Legacy series. It came out in 2014 by HarperCollins. It is young adult science fiction, and it is 371 pages. Your synopsis. The guard have suffered betrayal, and now they're scattered. With the Mogadorians planning the ultimate invasion, can the guard fight back and protect Earth? I should say, I know I already mentioned it, this is book five in the Lorian Legacy series, so when I give this review, I'm going to try really hard not to give spoilers for this book. If you haven't read the previous four, remember there are helpful timestamps that would let you skip over this if you would like to. So what didn't I like about this one? Well, the first thing I can say I didn't like is the ending. This one did the exact same thing as the previous books. It's going to end at an unusual spot in order to almost keep the action going simultaneously right through the series. So exactly like you used to expect if you read these books, it's going to stop at a really weird spot, meaning it's setting up for book six. And honestly, I'm a little tired of that happening. The next thing I can say I didn't like about this one is that it is for sure a series read. You cannot pick this one up and enjoy it if you haven't read the previous four. You have to have read the other ones. This book does not spend time giving you backstory and filling you in, which also means if it's been a little while since you've read the last one, it's going to take you a little while to catch up to where you were, which is exactly how I felt. The next thing I can say I didn't like about this one is the fact that characters are referred to as numbers. I think the reason why that bothered me in this one is that some of the characters, four, six, nine, are referred to as numbers where other ones and I can't even remember her name right now, are referred to by name. I don't think that would normally be a really big deal. Some numbers, some names, you get used to it. But the book is called The Revenge of Seven. And Seven's one of the ones who doesn't go by her number. So I kept having to like stop the book and go, okay, is she seven? It's, am I remembering this right? So you would count up. And that got a little frustrating. So what did I like about the story? Well, the first thing, and of course, this is the reason I keep coming back to this series, is the characters. These characters are incredibly well written. Right from that first book, I was hooked by John and his story. And of course, he is still here and still in the story and is one of the driving forces. But now the story is told in alternating viewpoints between Ella, Six, and John. And there are three characters who you really love and are very well written. So if you like the characters in the previous books, you're going to love how they're represented in this one. The next thing I liked about this one is the action sequences. I actually believe the action sequences in this book are even more well-written than in the previous books. They capture the special abilities of the characters, the emotion of the scene, and they just please everyone who likes action sequences. The third thing I can say I liked about this one is it is packed with twists. It has developing legacies of our characters, which we've grown to expect, and it pleased me in a very solid way. The twists with this one will keep you turning pages. So who do I think should read this one? If you aren't reading this series and you like the idea of a book detailing an alien race of people here 
to save us from a different alien race of people, you should start with the first book, I Am Number Four, and read this series because it's very well done. If you are already a fan of this series, definitely keep going with number five, and then I'm going to go find number six. My overall rating for this one, I went three stars. At this point, being the fifth book in a series, it has a pretty niche audience. You had to have read the other four, but if you are in that niche, you are not going to be disappointed. This is a very well-written book. So I went three stars for The Revenge of Seven by Pittacus Lore. This next book had been on my TBR list the longest before this month started. The next book I read in the month of February is Rising by Shannon Winters. This is an adult age category mystery thriller. It is a 2014 publication by Ravensong Digital and 240 pages. Your synopsis. Tessa St. James has been sent to her old hometown to investigate a high profile murder. She never expects how entangled her past will become in the investigation or how much magic may have to do with it. So what didn't I like about this one? It seems relevant when you start the book that Kessa is an FBI agent, but then she spends the rest of the book completely throwing police procedures out the window. So it's done with reason, but it did irk me a little bit that we set her up to be an agent and then we threw out proper police procedures. The second thing that I didn't like is that the romance in this one felt a little forced. I didn't get what these two saw in each other. Of course, this is marked as the first in a series, so it's possible it'll play out a little bit later, but it almost felt more like they're the only two people, so I have to throw them together. The last thing I didn't like about this one, and this is just because it was pretty well done, is that this one came out in 2014 and is marked as the first in the series, but all my research shows that there seems to be no second in the series. So I almost felt like I fell into a world I wanted more of, and I don't know if I'm ever going to get it. So what did I like? Well, the first thing I can say I liked about this one is the ending is really, really well done. You get enough answers to be happy with this one, and yet if this ends up getting a sequel and not being a standalone, I still have enough questions that I'd like to explore more. So if you're afraid of starting one that may not have a sequel, don't be. The ending is well done. You do get a lot of satisfying answers. The second thing I liked about this one is Kessa. As a main character, she's very well written. She's interesting, she's smart, which are two of my absolute favorite things in a lead character. She also does kind of fall into that trope of um, a hero who's learning that they're a hero, like a reluctant hero sort of story, but it's done in an interesting way. And it's a twist because Kess is not a teenager. So I kind of like that twist on that trope. The third thing I can say I liked about this one is that the whole idea of crossing a story that is an FBI agent solving a mystery, right? So we've read those before. I like mystery thrillers like that, police solving something. Taking that and combining it with warring factions of mythological creatures and throwing those two into one story, that's brilliant. That's incredibly well done. I loved the way the mythological trope sort of played out. I loved the way it was different than other ones I've read. So really the whole premise of this book, very well done. So who do I think should read this one? If the idea of warring mythological factions appeals to you, you like that whole werewolf versus other things storyline, you're gonna like this one because it has that. If you actually like strong female lead characters in a police crime solving story, if you like that, then this will appeal to you also. And if the idea of throwing those two into one book appeals to you, well then this is definitely the niche you're looking for. My overall rating, I said three stars. This is gonna be pretty niche because we're talking about you have to enjoy both of those things to really love this book. But if you happen to love those, this will be your favorite book of the year, for sure. So overall, three stars for Rising by Shannon Winters. That is it for me and the next five books that I read in February. If you have a recommendation of something you think I would love, especially if it's based on the one you heard me rate five stars today, make sure you drop the name of the book and the author in the comments so that I can find it. If you are an author or a publisher who had a part in bringing a book into the world, please make sure you follow the link in the description to send me that book and get it moved up my TBR. Drop a comment to let me know you're still here. Hit subscribe and tap that little bell so you know when I'm back. Keep plotting the path to your dreams, and I will see you next time. Bye!